Do you hear that? That is the sound of Korean bulgogi stew happiness. Today, I'm going to show you how to make Korean bulgogi stew called tukbegi bulgogi. This bulgogi stew is extra delicious because we add sweet potato starch noodles called tangmyeon. Yes, these are the noodles that you use to make the dish called japchae. Oh, you know it's going to be good. And the broth is so simple to make, but together with the bulgogi, it is so, so delicious. So don't miss out and let me show you how to make this. 오늘의 레시피 아주 맛있는 뚝배기 불고기 만들기 오늘도 여러분들과 영어로 함께 하겠습니다. You are about to enter the gates of food heaven right now. <laughs> Hi everyone, this is Helen and welcome to Modern Pepper. 안녕하세요, Modern Pepper의 Helen입니다. To make our tukbegi bulgogi, we need about 450 grams of beef ribeye slices. Any thinly sliced beef will work. In a large bowl filled with cold water, we're gonna add our thinly sliced beef. And we're gonna let this soak at room temperature for 30 minutes. We also need about 100 grams of Swiss potato starch noodles called tangmyeon. These are the noodles that we use to make the dish called japchae, but the noodle itself is called tangmyeon. Now, make sure to use only Korean tangmyeon noodles, okay? In the States, these are also called glass noodles, but of course not in Korea. Using a baking tray filled with enough cold water so that we could soak our tangmyeon noodles in here like so. And I always like to put a plate over it so it's fully submerged in the water. And we're gonna let this soak on your kitchen counter for anywhere between 15 to 30 minutes. And 30 minutes later, you should be able to pick it up like this and it just is completely bendy. So this is ready to go. 30 minutes later, it has pulled the excess blood from our beef slices, like so. And I want you to pour this into a strainer. So just gently move it around in this cold water to pull off any extra blood that was uh, trapped in between our slices, like that. And then pour it back into our strainer again. And then I want you to pick some up in your hand like that. And I just want you to just gently squeeze it, just lightly, three times, like that. And then I want you to just tear up your bulgogi like that, or you could put it back on the cutting board and cut it, because we just want smaller sizes so that it's easier to eat. And then in a clean bowl, and add the rest to our bowl. Today's bulgogi marinade is a very simple one, just using these four ingredients plus salt and pepper. Before we add the ingredients, we're gonna add a generous pinch of salt and some black pepper. About a good generous pinch of black pepper. Three tablespoons of chinganjang. If you don't have chinganjang, you could use all-purpose soy sauce. One and a half tablespoon of brown sugar. One tablespoon of minced garlic. One scallion, finely minced. So mix up all the ingredients on the side first. And then just go in with both hands and just make sure that the beef mops up all of our marinade and you could gently like kind of massage it. We call it in Korean like chumulok <laughs> chumulok. That means like you massage it and you kind of work your hands. So now all the marinade's gone because it got absorbed into our beef. So just loosely cover it with our plastic wrap like that and you could let this sit at room temperature for about 30 minutes or you could keep this in the fridge overnight for about 12 hours or even 24 hours, and that will make it taste extra, extra yummy. And we need the following vegetables to add to our tukbegi bulgogi. White onions, about 100 grams. Three slices of carrots. One scallion. So if your scallion white part is thick, just split it down the middle like that. Half again, there we have it. Two pilkopotak, also known as shiitake mushrooms here in the States. Remove the stem. Now this beef bulgogi stew is called tukbegi bulgogi because of this clay pot called tukbegi. Your earthenware clay pot, it is 
super strong and could retain really, really high temperature. You could buy this at any Korean supermarket or I'll have the link in the description box below. And today I'm using a size that's about three liters or 12 and a half cups of water inside. Add five cups of water to your tukbegi. And of course, if you don't have tukbegi, just use any heavy bottom pot. Cast iron pots are also great for this. Set your heat to high and bring it to boil. And to our pot of water, we're gonna include the following ingredients. I have one thin slice of Korean radish called mu, weighing in about 40 grams. If you don't have Korean radish, you could use one of these round pink or red radishes that you could find at your local supermarket. And two cloves of garlic, crushed. One scallion, just fold it in half and just dunk it in there. Two small pieces of dried sea kelp called tashima, and one tablespoon of gukkanjang. If you don't have gukkanjang, you could use all purpose soy sauce. And then we're gonna cover with the lid. Turn down your heat to low and let this slowly simmer for just 10 minutes. All right, so it's been 10 minutes and let's take a look. Ooh, look at that. So if you wanna just use hot water instead, then you can. But you know, when it comes to food, what you put into it, you literally get it back in terms of how delicious the food comes out. Okay, so we're gonna turn the heat off and we're gonna pull out everything from our pot and put it in our bowl like that. And then make sure to squish to put back our delicious broth. So what do you do with this? Don't throw it away. Put some soy sauce and some salt and sesame oil, mix it all up, cut it up with your scissors and eat it as your snack with some warm Korean rice and kimchi. All right, so make sure our delicious broth is boiling hot. All right, we're gonna add our bulgogi in here. Mop up everything in the bowl and then put it in. And I want you to stir it. And to this, we're gonna add our onions. And then just stir and break up our onion clusters like that. Beautiful. Your heat remains at high and we're gonna wait for this to start boiling. Look at that. So. You see this foam, grayish foam? We're gonna scoop it out. Now, if you didn't pre-soak the beef earlier to remove the excess blood, you would have so much of this gray gunk all over your broth and it just looks horrible and it tastes not good either. So any foam that you see at this point, using a fine mesh strainer, just pull it out. And luckily we don't have that much because we pre-soaked our beef. And then we're gonna push our bulgogi to the side a little bit and make room. And we're gonna just drop in our tangmyeon noodles that we soaked earlier. Now, because we soaked our tangmyeon noodles earlier, the noodles will cook real fast in less than two minutes. So we're gonna kinda push the noodles to the bottom so it cooks faster. And we're gonna wait for this to start boiling. Your heat remains at high. All right, so it's been a little under two minutes at high heat, and we're gonna check to see how our tangmyeon looks. Oh. This looks so good. <gasps> Love tangmyeon noodles. So this is ready. So what you wanna do is pull up all the tangmyeon noodles and kind of try to stack it on top of our bulgogi because tangmyeon noodles, once it's cooked, you gotta eat it pretty fast or else it gets super bloated and it sucks up all the delicious broth. Push the tangmyeon noodles to the side like that. Now I want you to have a quick taste test and taste the broth. You should make it the way you like it. So if you want it saltier, of course add more salt. Oh. Just make it at home. I can't explain it. It's just so comforting and so delicious. And everything that we love about bulgogi taste, but in a broth format, mucho bueno. Secret tip that I'm gonna share with you. So here I have beef tashita, sogogi tashita. You could add a teaspoon of this to the broth now, and it will just make, or maybe half a teaspoon, your soup taste like restaurant good or even better than restaurant good. <laughs> This is basically done. So we're just literally garnishing it now with the rest of our vegetables like that. And we'll put the carrots next to it. And then we'll put the mushrooms. And the mushrooms don't really even need to cook much long. And all you wanna do at this point is just take a spoon and just 
pour the broth on top, the mushrooms squish it down, and then squish down our carrots and our scallions so it gets absorbed into our delicious broth. And this is basically done. So the only thing left to do is you turn off the heat and eat it quickly. Ooh la la. Uh, I'm gonna taste it with you. Mm -hmm. The mushrooms soaked up all that delicious broth, so it's oh. so good. <laughs> and to this, all you have to do is just add a tiny drizzle of sesame oil, just like that. Oh, the fragrance, oh, smell of vision I wish you had it. And just a tiny bit of sesame seeds. You don't have to add this if you don't want to. It's optional. So you always have to start with the noodles first. The noodles get bloated real fast. So you have to eat the noodles first. <gasps> look at that. And then you get some vegetables. <gasps> does that look good or does that look good? And then you put it in your bowl like that. And then quickly you go in and enjoy your noodles. You are about to enter the gates of food heaven right now. <laughs> I always go for the noodles first. And it's one of those things in my family where you snooze, you lose. You want to eat this? You better show up before the noodles disappear. Put it in my bowl, and then you blow on it before you eat it. Okay, so for folks that do not enjoy the eating show, I'm gonna ask you to exit the video right now. But everyone else, stay with me. Bon appetit! Mm. Do I need to say anything else? I have literally entered the gates of food heaven right now. <laughs> it's that good. And then you go in and make yourself a spoonful of happiness. Look at that. With our tangyeon noodles and bulgogi vegetables and the delicious broth all together. <gasps> oh, you know the noodles are gonna be so good. And then once you're done eating and there's some left, you uh, wanna drink slurp this. So drink slurping is a technique. If you practice, you'll get good at it. <laughs> Cheers, everyone. Mm. That truly is the sound of noodle happiness. And then you want to get some Korean rice, you know, however much you may like. Put it to your serving bowl, and we're going to get our broth. <laughs> Pour it in there, and then whatever's left over. Put it in there. I'm going to put more broth. I just mix it all up. Here is another spoonful of food heaven happiness. And of course, the only other thing that would make this extra special is a piece of kimchi together. Oh, even better. Hope you enjoy this at home. I'm sorry I can't feed you. <laughs> mm. Mm. I mean, who knew that bulgogi stew would just make me so happy? Well, you knew that. I knew that, actually. <laughs> so I want to thank everyone for watching today. And if you enjoyed watching today's video, I would greatly, greatly appreciate it if you would click on that thumbs up icon. Clicking on that icon supports my channel tremendously. So I want to thank you in advance. And subscribe if you did not subscribe yet. 여러분 오늘 재밌게 보셨으면 꼭 좋아하는 버튼과 구독 버튼도 눌러주세요. 다음 비디오에서 꼭 뵙겠습니다. All right, folks, I will see you in one of the videos you see right here.